My Brother's Lion, written and illustrated by Joshua Burleson, narrated by Richard Riemann. For Elijah, sleep well among the stars. One warm summer night, I was out catching fireflies with my big brother. We paused for a moment to look at the stars, and he told me some were connected to the other. He told me about constellations, certain stars that make an outline caused by a glowing thread. When I was around your age, one was cut, and I had to repair it, he said. His story took place a long time ago, when my big brother was just a small boy like me. Even though he was kind and fun to play with, no other kids lived nearby, so his life was quiet, and he often felt lonely. Our mom had noticed my brother was lonesome, so she gave him a stuffed lion to be his bedtime companion. Even though the toy looked old and battered, my brother came to love him more than anyone could ever imagine. The very first night my brother slept with his new companion, the moon was sitting just right. To my brother's surprise, his stuffed lion let out a roar and came bursting to life. The lion was powerful but kind and quickly became my brother's dearest friend. Together they found a fantastical world that existed only when the day had come to its end. Late one night, a glowing thread drifted in through my brother's window. It must have been cut loose from a constellation, my brother whispered to his lion. Wherever it leads, we should follow. Working quietly, they built a ship from the bed, curtain, and blankets around my brother's room. They had to work quickly because our mom and dad would be awake pretty soon. Out the window, my brother and his lion sailed in the direction the glowing strand led. All the while, being careful not to snap or tangle the thread. They sailed past planets, some asteroids, and even a comet in motion. Far ahead in the distance, they could see the spot where the thread had been broken. Arriving at the star that had been cut loose from its constellation, they'd need to find the thread's anchor, but that would require some exploration. First, the search began in a chocolate swamp with clumps of cream and marshmallows. They soon happened upon a cookie crock, picking on a banana man, lost in the chocolate shallows. After rescuing the banana man from the cookie crock, he picked up a long golden straw. He'd been searching the swamp for just the right one to play some banana split hoopla. Later, searching the clouds, they found a mechanical dragon cradled in peaks that pierced the sky. Often the dragon would make a loud hissing noise, and they wanted to find out why. Turned out the dragon was friendly. He just needed a little help. A steam valve on his tooth had blown open, causing a loose engine belt. After that, they searched the hills and found a tree that grew strange green paper. For some reason, it was making the animals selfish and act out with bursts of anger. They found a new use for it. My brother said it would make sense to me later. Instead of fighting over who had more of it, the animals used it as toilet paper. Next. They searched deep in the murky wood and came across a grumpy goblin queen. Nothing would cheer her up. She was testy and sometimes a little mean. 
they decided to build a stage and put on a very silly play. The Goblin Queen laughed loudly, <laughs> and all her grumpiness melted away. Finally, they came to a far green country where wild kites soared high. In the distance, they spotted the anchor, which marked its location from the sky. Climbing the hills, a dangerous villain jumped out just ahead. It was Scissorat, the culprit who'd cut the constellation's thread. <coughs> My brother was scared, and a part of him wanted to hide or turn back and run. But he gathered his courage because he knew Scissorat wouldn't stop here. He'd cut down every constellation, one by one. Leaping high from his perch, the giant rat swung a powerful attack. My brother's sword splintered with a loud thud and a thwack. Having no defense, he took a step back, but fell to the ground in dismay. Suddenly, his lion let out a thundering roar, <coughs> which made Scissorat scurry away. The anchor was now clear, and with the kite's help, they tied the line tight. After a long journey, the constellation was once again fixed, and all was set right. They started for home when my brother's lion paused with some hesitation. He felt he must stay behind to guard against Scissorat and keep watch over the constellation. My big brother started to cry because he was afraid to be alone again. With all their adventures, he now knew what it meant to have a true best friend. My brother sank deep into his lion's mane and gave him one last squeeze so very tight. His lion purred back at him to let him know everything would be all right. By himself, my brother sailed back across the stars and through the Milky Way. It was a lonely journey home, but he remembered the way. Arriving home at his bedroom window, he began to realize his heart would never be the same. Even though my brother missed his lion, he was grateful for their time together and the best of friends that they became. Many years have passed, and I'm now as old as my brother was then. He had finished telling me his story, but I was still left with some questions. Do you ever miss your lion? Is he just too far away? Sometimes are you lonely? Can you go back to find your lion someday? My brother looked down at me and then back up at the sky. With a gentle whisper, he let out his reply. No matter where I am, even in places, not yet known. My lion watches over me from the stars. I'm never really alone. The end? This has been My Brother's Lion, written and illustrated by Joshua Burleson, narrated by Richard Riemann, produced by Imagination Video Books. My Brother's Lion is available in book format on Amazon.com.